Hello and welcome to the IMIS updates for September 2021. My name is Alison Rose, I'm a senior trainer with ASI Training. I'm going to give you an overview on the latest updates for IMIS EMS Enterprise or otherwise known as 20-300. This is for version 20.3.105. We have a number of new updates and features to show you as part of the new .105 release of IMIS EMS Enterprise. So much so that we're going to break it out into four different videos to be able to show you key pieces of information and take you through those updates in IMIS. We have some updates in our settings and contact area and some other staff site updates to begin with. We have an update video separately on IMIS Form Builder for those that are licensed for IMIS Forms. We have finance and billing updates for those that work in those areas. And finally, some report writer updates for those that are licensed for report writer. You can find out more about those features in the IMAS update for IMAS EMS Enterprise course in the ASI Learning Hub with your IMAS Learning subscription. Let's start though by showing you some of the key staff site updates. Firstly, the IMAS staff site has had a makeover. You will now find a new look staff site especially on your dashboards. Let's go and have a look at that in our IMAS system. So I'm going to sign in as Brian Murphy and you'll notice straight away that the staff site looks different. We've removed the colored backgrounds from the progress trackers. The charts are a bit cleaner and you'll notice the buttons look a little different as well. You can still, of course, copy and edit the out of the box dashboards and change the skins of your dashboard charts and your CSS in your progress trackers as needed. But note, if you have previously customized the out of the box dashboards, they won't be upgraded to look like this. However, you can find these under the core content staff dashboards folder in your page builder, and you can then copy that CSS class and chart skin so your customized dashboards are also in line with the new look staff site. Let's look at some settings and contact updates. Firstly, there is a new system setting that will help define your organization's default date and time display options. This option enables our administrators to specify the default culture for your website by either choosing the browser's language settings or an organizational default. When the organization default is selected, dates and numbers default to that culture instead of using the browser's language settings. So to update this information, we go into settings, organization, display dates and numbers. It's right at the bottom of our organization settings here. We can choose the option of the user's browser language settings or the organization default and then decide the default culture from the drop-down list. If the default culture drop-down does not contain your country's culture, you can choose other, and in the text box provided, you can choose the supported language code like ZHSG for Chinese Singapore. When we save that option, we may need to purge the system cache first, but we'll come back to an event, for example, and scrolling down, in my program items, I can now see the Chinese Singapore culture for my dates and times. Additionally, our accrual dues invoices also use the organization default culture setting to define the date format on our invoice as well. Next, we have language specification for a website. For those with a translation license in your IMA system, there's a new website property that says always display this website in a specific language which allows our website admins to define the language to use for a specific RISE website. So for example, perhaps you have a website in English and one in French. When enabled, the website will always display in that language and the end user doesn't then have to choose the option for a different language for that site. You may have on your website an option for a user to select which language do I wanna see this website translated into. And there's our options displayed in a dropdown. But what if you want your website to display a specific language at all times? We can do that in Rise, Site Builder, and Manage Websites. And I'm going to choose my AOST website in French. And on the Properties tab, we can see that option, always display this website in a specific language. Which language are we choosing? 
So now you can see my navigation items and utility items are displaying in French at the top of the page here. The other setting we have available is to define a default custom currency. Under Settings, Finance, General, you can choose a default currency code from an existing drop-down list or select Other and enter the three-letter ISO currency code for your country. So that's some of the new settings that we can now work with. What's new with our contact section? Firstly, you can now disable the address verification service on your contact account creator iPod. Well, we now have the ability to turn off or disable the address verification service on individual instances of the contact account creator iPod. It is generally recommended to use the address verification service when someone creates their account to ensure the address is entered correctly. However, there are times you may want to allow your users to bypass that requirement. For example, when someone's making a donation to your organization through a Give Now page. And we don't need any blockers from making this an easy transaction for them. So now you can disable this option on those instances. By default, under Rise, in the Create Account page we have here, we have the Contact Account Creator iPart. If I click on Configure, in the Contact Account Creator iPart, we can now see there's an option as we scroll down where we include address, we now have the option to use address verification service or disable it. By default, this is enabled for a create account page that comes with IMAS. However, in our Give Now page that is now shipped with IMAS as part of fundraising, where we have the contact account creator iPart, it is disabled by default. So the address verification service can be enabled or disabled based on each of your contact account creator iParts. The other new feature that has been released is our keyword search recent history dropdown. So for example, if you're working in an upcoming event every day, you don't need to go to the events menu item or the dashboard or find events anymore. You can easily navigate to your recent history by going to the keyword search and seeing your recent history in a dropdown. Here you will find your most recent 10 contact organization, event or group records that you've clicked on. So just with one click, you can go straight to the event from here. So much quicker. I've got a few little updates on our settings and contact section. Let's have a look at some other key updates for .105 version. Now on our order confirmation pages, we have images where we can display product or event images on our order confirmation page. Whatever images you've uploaded to your products or your events will display in your order confirmation, both on the staff site and the public website. We have updates to both of our SSRS reports and our iParts. So when you go into an SSRS report or your iParts, when you're adding your iParts to your web pages, there are short descriptions listed now under those reports and labels. So if I go into Continuum, Fundraising reports, you'll now see a description of what that report is. The other thing with RISE we can do is share cookies across subdomains. So enabling the new share cookies across subdomains option allows website cookies to be shared across all of your subdomains, making sure that users stay logged in while navigating between websites. We'll find this information under Settings, RISE, Quick Setup. There is our option to share cookies across subdomains and then we enter the domains for the cookies to be shared. Have you created or edited a business object and tried to find a specific table to add to the database for the business object from the really long list of existing tables of data? Well, the good news is that now you have a quick find search tool when you add a table to a business object. No more scrolling through the never ending list of data tables when you know the table name already. And last but certainly not least, our dashboard charts now have a toggle view. So you can easily toggle between the chart and look at the query that makes up that chart. Let's have a look at a couple of dashboards to see this in action. So for example, we see the donut chart here of members by member type. In the top right hand corner, you'll see a little table that's a toggle view. When I click on it, I can then see the query results. 
and the chart on the right hand side here is members by region, I can toggle and see those results in a query. If you've customised your dashboards, you can enable or disable this option within the Query Chart Viewer iPart. Now scroll down. Here is the option to enable or disable to view the results in a grid, which will enable that toggle view. Another dashboard that's been updated is our Advanced Email Dashboard. The Advanced Email Dashboard progress trackers have been updated to be clickable progress trackers. When you click on them, it will hyperlink to another page or information of results. So for example, the number of emails sent, we can see how this is calculated based on the query results or our 63% open rate. What is that based on for each of those advanced emails that have been sent? Again, this is another new option that you can enable or disable with your customized dashboards to select enable hyperlink in your navigation and hyperlink that progress tracker to a shortcut, URL or query results. And do you want it to pop up in the same window, new window or a pop up window? While I'm in the progress tracker iPart, as you've seen with our staff site update, there's a new CSS class for our progress trackers. So this is where you could copy and paste into your progress tracker iParts if you need to update them. So that is a few pieces of information that have been updated for this version of IMS. So find out more about what's new in IMS in the ASI Learning Hub, where we have additional courses, content, and new updates on Form Builder, Report Writer, and Finance and Billing. Alternatively, you can find the update in our documentation on help.imus.com through the What's New page. Thank you, enjoy the latest version of IMUS and happy learning.